Okay, so as, as I mentioned at the beginning, so tonight we're really sort of preparing ourselves to come to a place of really praying for the Holy Spirit. After these last four weeks of hearing a lot of information, I think this is really where we want to put ourselves in a vulnerable space where we allow, to, allow ourselves to encounter and, and be transformed. Last week you heard Natalie give that very good talk where she was talking about all the ways that the Spirit works in us. And towards the end of it, she started talking very much about this idea of the charisms. You know, that there are, there are the very particular gifts that God gives to each Christian that in our baptism, we're not meant to just be passive spectators. And I think it really is quite tragic that the culture of our church has become that. You know, where mass becomes a consumer event. You, you come to mass, you sit down, you receive, you go home. Whereas the witness of the scriptures, the Acts of the Apostles, and very much the early church, was that every person had a role. Every person had particular gifting given them by the Spirit. And there's a, there's a beautiful line in, I think it was from St. Augustine, where he said that in the same way that the rain comes down from heaven and fills every plant in a very unique way. It takes the shape of everything very uniquely. He said, in the same way, the Holy Spirit comes down upon every Christian in a very unique way. You know, there is no, no, no experience that you can ever compare yourself to because there is a particular grace given to each one of us. So to break this open, I'm going to invite up Father Dan, who is going to present for us a bit more about this whole idea of the charisms. Thanks, Father Dave. Um, I do need to use the mic, I think, but, uh, and I've got clicker as well, so both my hands are, are full. For an Italian, this is very difficult, you know, because we normally speak with our hands, so Purella knows that, you've already got both hands going. So tonight, it is a very, oh, we're, are we, other way? It's upside down. Ah, look at that. It's all in sequence. Discover the Holy Spirit. Ah, these nights for me, for uh, nearly 30 years, have been um, very special. I, I almost feel young again. This word discovery, discovering the gift of the Holy Spirit can happen at any time in a person's life, um, at any moment. Just even with that, you know, the story of the good faith on the cross. Um, at the last breath of his life, he turned to the Lord and he discovered the Holy Spirit in the person of Jesus, leading him to Jesus. And so tonight we have this wonderful opportunity personally to say yes again to the Lord. Maybe you've been saying yes to God for your whole life. Maybe you're only getting to know God uh, more recently but we're going to ask so important to ask the Lord to fill us personally and tonight I want to share about the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit ask and you will, will receive such an important text from Luke's gospel ask and you shall receive what's the next line Now, most people know up to there, but then it goes on to say, Jesus says, what father among you would give uh, your child a scorpion if they asked for bread and so on, making this, you know, um, even you who aren't perfect, Jesus uses a sort of extreme word, evil, you know how to give good things to your children. How much more... Does the Father in heaven want to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? It's a little three-letter word, but it has so much power. I can't be a couch potato Christian. I must get off the couch and make that personal decision to open my life to him, to ask for this wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit and the promise is for all of you, every person, and particularly you who are here tonight. 
You have made a choice to be here. And whether you know it or not, God's always planned for you to be here tonight. And he has something for you. The gift of his very self. The love between the Father and the Son is being offered to you like you have received before, but the Holy Spirit always makes things... Does anyone know? Begins with the letter N. New. Thanks, Jace. Good on you, mate. Makes things new. And that's what I need. I need to be made new again, to be renewed in God's Spirit. And that beautiful text from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, the promise that was made to us. And if some of you who are old enough know, know that Pope Benedict XVI came to Australia in the year 2008 for the World Youth Day. And this text was chosen for Australia, for Australia and particularly for our young people. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And that's, I think, why he chose uh, this text, because Australia to uh, Italy is the ends of the earth. So it's a symbol that the Holy Spirit can't be hindered, can't be shackled, can't be chained up by anyone or any organisation. I love going into the prison and saying that they can't let many people come in here. The, the walls are high and the wire is sharp. But do the birds come in here? Can, can the birds still fly into the prison? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just like the Holy Spirit. But there is one person that can stop the Holy Spirit coming into your life. And usually the answer is Jesus or the devil. <laughs> so, but then someone you'll see, you'll see the Holy Spirit working in someone. And, and what's the answer? Who's the only person that can really stop the Holy Spirit coming into your life? Myself, yourself. That is uh, the only hindrance. And sometimes those hindrances are very big. And maybe that's why you might have felt that I've never actually... I've always known there's something about my faith that's special, that's important, that's amazing. But I've never really fully grasped that. That's what happened at Pentecost. They fully grasped the power of God, of God's love in the midst of their own unworthiness. And that was one of the beautiful parts of last week's awesome talk when Natalie was saying most of us, many of us battle against this unworthiness or, or that I just don't believe it's possible for the Holy Spirit to be active in my life, to be real and to be powerful to forgive me and to heal me and to give me these gifts. So Pentecost can be any day because it's the day they gathered together with the Blessed Virgin Mary and asked. Fearful as they were, that's okay. If you're afraid, it's probably better than being too arrogant. <laughs> if you're unsure, that's okay. If you think still struggling intellectually, this... this uh, you know, what, what is he talking about? Is this some sort of weird cultic uh, cult from the Pentecostals or something? They can be human hindrances to that personal opening of your heart to the Lord Jesus. And so what does... Uh, some of you might know that guy in white down there. That's uh, Pope Francis. He's the leader of the Catholic Church throughout the world. And what a big world. Um, the Catholic magazine America... Um, said that as a movement, it's not really a prayer group or anything, but this charismatic movement, the way that since the Second Vatican Council, the Holy Spirit has sort of been activating people's life more in a more greater expression. 
<clears throat> it's affected 235 countries around the world and, and approximately 120 million people. So 120 million people have been involved with prayer groups or have said in some way this renewal of the Holy Spirit's action in my life ha has touched me and affected me and changed my journey in a very significant way. And Pope Francis has said before, it's a chance for the church. It's a chance, just like I said, we, we've always felt that there's something wonderful about Christianity and even about our Catholic church. It's like a, a, a giant that's sort of asleep and hasn't really woken up yet. There's something wonderful and powerful about what we have, but we haven't really discovered it or activated it. A current of grace. Now, that could mean like the current of a river. You know, you can jump. Or I, I like to think of uh, some people um, might like water slides. <laughs> water slides. You jump onto the water slide and it'll take you on your journey. That's something of how the Holy Spirit can activate our Christian life. Or electricity current. How would we be without electricity in our world today? It would be very, very different. Most of us would probably have a psychotic episode um, or find it terribly difficult um, without electricity. But something happens um, as an adult and even it can happen as a child as well, or a young person. God, God has no barriers. If someone asks and has the trust and the surrender like Mary, our mother, and the apostles, to sort of say, Lord, I, I'm not in control. I need you so much. I need you because I cannot live this Christian journey without you. You know, I'm too broken, too weak, too sinful, and the world and the power of the evil one is so powerful that um, I can't, I can't, I, I, I can't live the Christian life. That's, thank God, for the Holy Spirit, whose other name, John tells us, St. John, is what? Beginning with H. The helper, thank you. The helper, the, the one who comes to our aid. The one we ask for help from. And then the beautiful Saint Teresa, and we could go through so many saints um, about this gift of the Holy Spirit activating their life. I won't read you her quote, you can find that, because today I want to say something about today's saint. Does anyone know whose feast day it is today? Italiana. Who? Saint Mar Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. Saint Mary Magdalene, who I think um, is a saint, a, a Carmelite nun, who joined the Carmel when she was 16. You're not allowed to do that now, but she joined, she had a great love for the Eucharist, and one of the reasons why she decided to go to the Carmel was because um, they were offering their nuns Holy Communion every day. This is about 300 plus years ago, when Holy Communion was hard enough to, to to have on Sundays and something happened in her heart where she gave her life to the Lord in such a powerful way um, and they allowed her to take her final vows only after a couple of years because she got incredibly sick and they wheeled her in in a cot or on a bed into their chapel and she was allowed to make her final vows thinking that she would die any day well she lived till she was 41 and she had an amazing gift of faith. She had the gift of bilocation. She could be seen in other places when, as a Carmelite nun, she couldn't leave. She also is attributed with healing gifts and the ability to hear God's word and to speak it into people's lives. So, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, pray for us tonight that we can have that same open heart to the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Father also says, I prefer the word charismatic to be used as a, ver a verb, or maybe some might say more technically an adjective, rather than a noun. It's a, it's a description of an experience. 
It's, it is an experience. The charism, the, 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 the action of the Holy Spirit at work. Sometimes we can see it, like we can see the effects of the wind. Sometimes the, the movement of the Holy Spirit is a bit harder to discern and to see. Let's move on. Now, I'd like to play uh, a little video of a beautifully excited, um, charismatic uh, priest who's now actually a cardinal, Cardinal Raniero Cantalamessa. And um, Father Cantalamessa, which means sing the mass, actually, um, he had an experience in his life of opening up to the Holy Spirit as a priest. And uh, he's just going to share a little bit with us um, uh, on this video. Thank you, Nathan. It's like be born again. It's a new, a new birth, in the sense that everything becomes alive. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't change anything, and He changes everything. It doesn't add anything to what Jesus has already said and instituted, but He makes all Jesus has said and done alive today. But this is what the Holy Spirit is meant to be. The one who accomplishes, who realizes, who reenacted the work of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is a relationship, a person, a person. It's a personal love between both the Father and the, the Son. And if human love can change the life of two people, imagine what does the Holy Spirit do with love in person. When he comes upon a person, and when he, he is accepted, welcome. Whatever the Holy Spirit touches, the Holy Spirit changes. So it is normal that the experience of the Holy Spirit will, will bring some changes, even uh, in our feelings, in our emotions, in our uh, way of expressing ourselves. Uh, St. Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians, don't be uh, drunk with uh, alcohol, with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a, is a friend. He wants to, to make us happy, to make us uh, enjoy full life. So I would say <clears throat> we should not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. It's normal that when, when we first approach the Holy Spirit, that there should be a reaction of our laughter uh, uh, or tears or jumping for joy or speaking in tongues. I myself, I must confess that the first time I was, I experienced this kind of presence of the Spirit, it was an irrepressible uh, desire of laughter. But I understood that this was a very special kind of laughter. Uh, the Holy Spirit is a spirit of, of joy, of freedom. It's marvelous to experience the Holy Spirit because where the Spirit is, there is freedom, says St. Paul. There can be a, 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 a more <clears throat> rewarding experience than to experience the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Cardinal Cantalamessa. I, I'm glad there were subtitles on that for those of you who didn't quite get it. Um, he's been for many years the preacher to the, pape, to the Pope, to the Pope's household. So you want to be a good preacher if you're preaching to the Pope during Lent and Advent. And basically what he's saying, though, is this gift of the Holy Spirit is incredibly personal. Even though it's the Almighty God who created the world, that, that Holy Spirit can be a friend, can be someone so deep and personal and intimate um, and for him, his first experience was a sort of holy laughter, um, which is an interesting manifestation of the Holy Spirit. For me, um, my personal experience um, was when I was 18 years old, it started. And I'd been at Catholic high school. I thought I knew a few things about God and the church. Uh, but I stopped going to Mass, which showed how much I knew and how strong I was. Um, and um, I was tricked into going to a Catholic youth weekend. 
uh, was not only Catholic, but it was run by a charismatic community. So I was, uh, I was just told that there was a weekend down the coast with some young people. Would you like to come along? Oh, yeah, okay. I'm new to Melbourne, and I, I want to sort of see the big city and the beach and everything, meet new friends. Anyway, I, um, I went, and I, I heard them praying and singing in this thing called the gift of tongues and you may or may not have uh, have experienced that before um, and um, I sort of froze for a moment I think ah is am I really in a catholic thing or is this a cult or something or um, what's going on but it was the people themselves who some of them I had I did know um, that they because of who they are, they put me at rest and, and I, was, I was open. You know, what's this about? And on the Saturday night, they asked me, would you like to be prayed with for the Holy Spirit to come more strongly in your life? And I said, well, I'm here, I guess so. I'm a bit nervous, um, but that's okay. And, and I experienced uh, a, a peace and a joy that I'd never experienced before. And um, I, I was so much so, I, I was on a, on a sort of spiritual high. And uh, that later that night, I started, because um, I didn't really know how to pray by myself. My, my parents took me to Mass, and uh, we had rosary when the statue of Our Lady came around, and we said the rosary, but I'd never really prayed my own prayer to God. And... Uh, on that night, I didn't really know what to do. I was so excited, I started praying the rosary in Italian. And uh, <laughs> because, as, as Cardinal Cantalamassa said, the Holy Spirit can change you in the best possible way. Because, I mean, it, it's not the best photo, it's not the photo I wanted to, but it's the only one I could find. On the top right there, does anyone want to guess where that place is? The river, the Margaret River, no, um, the River Jordan. I've been so blessed. If you ever get a chance to go to the Holy Land, go, you will go to the, to the River Jordan. You can see that's a baptismal font full of water. We were able to celebrate Mass at the, the River Jordan to renew our vows. And some, some people are invited, if you wanted to sign yourself with that water, you know, give yourself a blessing, well... Um, I, I was probably a little bit over the top, and I just dunked my whole head and uh, the water. Uh, and, uh, um, but we know why that place is so significant, because the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, and the words of the Father said, You are my beloved Son. And that's what Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, helps us share in, that I'm a beloved son, I'm a beloved daughter. And that identity fills me with the, the love and the, the strength of the Holy Spirit. And, and that was something of that initial experience for me. But I went on one of these seminars and then I, they prayed over me and I was asking for the Holy Spirit and nothing happened. Okay, that's nice. Some people are having all sorts of different experiences. But I, I just felt, oh, I'm okay. yeah, I'm okay. It wasn't, wasn't some big thing. And... And reflecting on that afterwards made me realize that at different times with different people, God works in different ways. And there's no need for me to compare myself. Who, do you remember those two sons who, who, uh, who uh, had the father, the forgiving father? We call it usually the prodigal son, but it should be called the prodigal father because he was over the top, prodigious. And... And it was the, the older son compared himself with the second son, which, which there's no winners in that. Because you know what the father says at the end. My son, you're always with me, and all I have is... I can't divide up my inheritance. You have to, physically, but you can't. If, if, if you're God, his love is for everybody. And so that experience, that was my second experience. My third experience, I was at the, the chapel at the MGL seminary, seminary house in Melbourne. And one of the brothers asked me, oh, do you want to go for some prayer? 
um, we had evening prayer together and then and then it, I was just left in the chapel sort of um, praying with this brother and then he said oh do you want some prayer well I thought I better not say no um, uh, we're in the chapel and, and uh, that would be seen to be a little bit uh, you know not very holy so anyway he prays over me and all of a sudden I'm bawling my eyes out I'm in tears and I'm, I'm aware of two things how terribly sinful I am and how terribly weak I am and inadequate and how um, I've got no self-esteem, um, how broken I am. So this experience sometimes God gives us, the Holy Spirit allows us to see, not in a way that condemns us, not that I'm, I, you're not worthy sort of thing, because God always does things to increase our faith, hope and love. So my experience was of a healing from my own brokenness and sin and sometimes the holy spirit does that as well and then as i grew in in the gifts one of the beautiful things is praising god you know and i think um during that first song that we sung um i i felt like putting my hand up in the air i didn't see many people doing that actually um but um, when I first saw people spontaneously praising and singing up outside of, you know, the normal Catholic songs, I, I, I was a bit, I, I was out of my comfort zone. But then as I got to experience and, and, and know God and be thankful, you know, and I rem was reminded of, you know, the 10 lepers, only one of them went back to thank God. And how ungrateful I've been for the amazing things in my life. And how I started to learn how to thank and praise God from my own heart. And how that was so important. And then, while I was still at university, 18 years old, I was going to church in the morning before, before mass. I mean, before university. And as I came out of mass, I was so happy about what God was doing in my life. I was walking down a main street in the suburb of Hawthorne, wonderful place in, in Victoria, wonderful football team. And, and as I was going, I just started to thank and praise God. And I remembered an old song that I grew up with at school. God, our Father looks on us with love all the time. The Holy Spirit reminded me, and I got to the end of the song, and I just wanted to keep going. And I just went, Kariara Briera Baba. In the middle of that, this, you know, nine o'clock in the morning on this busy street, I was just walking along, you know, and I, and I received that gift of tongues, which um, is so helpful when you um, are just starting to really be serious as an adult, believing that God can empower me and strengthen me for the spiritual journey. And, and over the last um, 30 years, being able that that gift has opened up my faith in other things, um, like preaching. You know, at high school, I was very unpopular. I could not stand up in front of classes. I could not speak publicly. Um, some people find that hard to believe. Now you can't get the microphone off me. Um, but, but that's what God does. And that's what is possible. And that's what we want to, to say tonight. And as Father Dave said before, th those gifts that we get at confirmation from Isaiah 11, they're for personal sanctification, for personal growth. But these charisms are, as he said, for the service of the church to share the good news so people can believe and go to heaven and be saved. There are many charisms, but of course that one spirit now, the gift of tongues, I just sort of mentioned briefly. Some people might receive that gift tonight. You might um, even go home tonight, like I did, in a, in, a, in a totally different place, not in a church, and you might say, thank you, God, bless you, God. And it happened, uh, I prayed over many people for the gift of tongues, and one, one day, at a, at, uh, one evening at a, at a youth camp, um, this university student came up very intellectual. He said, this is my second camp, uh, but I don't have the gift of tongues. 
And uh, I just said to him, okay, let's pray. We started to pray and I just said, just start saying thank you, God, bless you, God, and just, you know, don't worry about what other people are thinking. And uh, we started doing that, but, but he sort of went quiet after a while. Um, and then I just heard God say, clear as a bell, tell him to say, ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. And, and I felt so terribly um, uh, juvenile or, or embarrassed. Here's this uni- young university student, and I've got to tell him, just say, ba, ba, ba. And, um, and I just felt, well, okay, I'll be humble. And I think that's from you, God. And I just said to him, look, um, I feel like God's saying, just say, ba, ba, ba. And then, as obedient as you would have, he closed his eyes and just said, ba, 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 ta ri ara ba ri ara ba ri ba So he he got the gift of tongues that night. So the gift of tongues is just an opening, and tonight you'll receive, uh, as you leave, uh, an inventory of these charismatic gifts. One of the beautiful things is prophetic word, and we have that sometimes at the charismatic mass. When we pray and get close to God, sometimes God would speak to us, an encouraging word or a challenging word or or something from the Bible. And it might not just be for us, it might be for everybody. And that's what we call the gift of prophecy. Um, And one last thing I'll just add is um, the extraordinary act of faith. And a lot of saints had this, that in terrible situations, when everything seems lost, the Holy Spirit can give an injection of faith for that particular moment that's beyond my own um, capacity. So, so many gifts available. um, And it's only the beginning of a journey. Um, Like uh, many of us go from, babies go from mother's milk to solids. Um, But it's such an exciting journey. So, I just wanted to encourage you tonight as we, we ask to the Lord and someone else who would like to encourage you with something of her story um, and her experience of the, the charisms is uh, Regina. So please make her welcome. So I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet, but hope the Holy Spirit is going to do what he needs to do. Um, So I'm going to cut out a few of these things. Sorry. Oh, that way? Okay, thank you. So as introduced by Natalie last week, so tonight I'll share a little bit about my experience of a gift that I received of the Holy Spirit, in particular the gift of speaking in tongues, which Father Dan alluded to. So I started attending St. Martin de Porres, Uh, community during a difficult period in my life back in 2001. It was during this time I developed a deeper devotion to Our Lady and the Rosary. So with it brought great healing and forgiveness in my life. Now attending St. Martin de Poros, I began, began to learn about the Holy Spirit, his work in my life and his gifts given to us for the building up of others. So in about 2004-2005 at St. Martin uh, de Porres held a Life in the Spirit seminar. So the seminar was led by Father Steve, the community chaplain at the time. We ended up in groups and we're simply praying over each other for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I did not feel anything different at the time or later, but I remember it was very positive and uplifting. I recall starting to practice speaking in tongues, particularly at night. I didn't feel comfortable doing this with people around. So when everyone went to sleep for the night, I would start praising and worshipping the Lord quietly and started speaking in tongues. It was a bit weird because it was new and I wondered whether it was for real. But I persisted in faith speaking in tongues. I had an opportunity about 16 years ago to attend a Disciples of Jesus Summer School of Evangelisation in Bathurst, New South Wales. These were usually held at the beginning of each year. So it was at this particular summer school in Bathurst that I attended that I met at the time Brother Joseph, who of course we now know as Father Joseph Neombasu, and who was the previous parish priest here at Holy Spirit. So at this summer school, we had 
an opportunity to pray over each other. I was in a small group with Father Joseph. The purpose of the groups was to pray over each other whilst enabling us to be receptive to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when it was Father Joseph's turn to receive prayer, I had the opportunity to pray over him in tongues. And at the end of the prayer, he turned to me excitedly and said, you spoke in my language. You spoke in Indonesian. If you're wondering, I actually don't know how to speak Indonesian. So I know what I had spoken wasn't through my, any knowledge of my own. So Father Joseph said, the words that I spoke in Indonesian means, my son, my son. I believe God was affirming my gift in speaking in tongues and also affirming Father Joseph in his faith journey as well. And yes, speaking in tongues is for real. I have continued to use and grow in this gift of tongues in my own intercessory prayer time, through intercessory prayer groups, praying or praying for over people, be it my family, in my church community. It has been said that if you don't use a particular gift, you can lose it. I believe the more you step out in faith, the more God will bless you in the work you do for him. But I am in a place... But I am in a place in my life now knowing who I am in Christ. And that is, I am a daughter of the Most High God. I am co-heirs with his son, Jesus. I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. I am blessed, blessed, blessed. And that goes for the rest of us. So we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are co-heirs with Christ. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places and we are blessed, blessed, blessed. So Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So I believe he has a plan for me and a plan for you and it is a good plan. We have the Holy Spirit to help us be his light and to shine brightly in order to bring others into the kingdom. Thank you for listening. So, a big thank you to both of you for that sharing. Now, I'm, I'm aware that, once again, that there's a lot in both of those sharings to sort of digest. Um, I'm also aware that for, for many people, for, for some of you, you're probably familiar with this stuff. You, you, you may have experienced this around the place. Um, for others, it seems very weird. And you know, as Father Dan mentioned, when he first encountered people praying for the Holy Spirit, it seemed very strange. Um, even just this whole idea of it, like a gift of worship, um, I, I'm very aware that it's, it's not really part of our culture here in Australia. You know, our, our, our church culture here is you go to church, you cross your arms, the choir does the singing for you, and then you go home. Um, but, but really, I think the, the essence of the whole story of salvation is that God wants to bring us back into a place of real love and gratitude. You know, like I, I really think that the gift of worship is what heals the damage done in the Garden of Eden. You know, because the original sin was the fact that we chose to not worship. We were like, no, we're not going to be grateful. We're not going to thank you for anything. And so I think there is something very key about what God has done to give us a gift to actually return home by saying thank you. You know, it's very simple. So... As I mentioned last week, we, we want to move into a space where we can actually pray for this gift. Now, what we want to do is we'll break up very quickly into our small groups. Um, you, you know, we've tried to keep it a bit more ordered this week, so we've got chairs set up, set up so you don't have to worry about moving the pews. If you can move into your small groups pretty quickly, and, and for those who are here for the first time, 
just look for a small group which you look like you'll be comfortable in and jump in there. Um, one question, and, and I'm only going to give you five minutes, okay? So don't mess around. Jump straight into it. One question is basically, where, how do you feel about praying for this grace of the Holy Spirit? You know, is there something in you which is afraid or resistant or just indifferent to it? Just, just to kind of share very quickly, how do you feel about opening yourself to this grace? Okay, so if, if I can get you to move into your small groups, give you five minutes to discuss, and then I'll lead you into the next part of where we're going to go from here.